Good afternoon. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Suki Norris. I am a, a senior, I'm the Senior Knowledge Engineer with the ECHO Group. And I look forward to talking to you today about both our visual health record and the CCBHC, two things that I'm quite interested in and quite passionate about. Uh, during the broadcast, I'll be sharing information both from a screen uh, from this uh, PowerPoint as well as from my as our application. If you have any questions, type them into the box. It's called questions. It should be to the right of your screen, and we'll see how many we can get to. Any questions we don't get to, we'll try and answer after the presentation is complete. Echo's visual health record, which we'll be talking about for a while is the best EHR for behavioral health. It is something completely unique in the industry. The ECHO Group <clears throat> develops enterprise-wide software that includes electronic health records. We provide it both as a SaaS model um, or cloud model, as well as self-hosted. And we also have a revenue cycle management project, product that will do your billing for you. We've been privately held from our inception in 1980. Our, our vision statement is to empower our partners to be the most clinically effective and financially strong. We call, we, our partners are our customers. Once a year we have a, an opportunity, we have a user group that's what we call peer-to-peer. And we call it peer-to-peer -peer because not only is it an opportunity for our customers to talk to us as peers, but also for customers to talk to other customers and create those relationships that sometimes become uh, regional user groups, as well as uh, sharing information that we make available on an ECHO-supported echo um, social media site. Why visual matters? Our visual health record is, is a visual way of looking at clinical data. We, like many other vendors in the field, for a long time had, had a, a, our application was based on a file structure with tabs and files. But we realized when looking at things that we, that people remember 60,000 60, times, have a 60,000 times faster processing they remember 70%, probably 80% more of what we see versus what we hear versus what we read. In putting that together, as you see in this slide, we realized that the best way to present clinical data was to do it visually, to give the clinician the ability to tell this, to understand the client's perspective immediately upon logging into the system and seeing that clinical record. We call it a no-click brilliance. In a little bit, I'm going to show you an example of, a, of our VHR and show you how I can tell the complete story of the, of the client without ever clicking on, a, on an icon, clicking on a hyperlink, just by looking at the screen and understanding what it's telling me. Today, what we're going to do is an overview of the VHR, and then we're going to do an overview of CCBHC and look at things like VHR configuration and dashboards the things that we know will support our partners in meeting the requirements of either a CCBHC or a DCO. Both things I will def I'll define as we get further into the, pro into the product, into, the, into this discussion today. So I'm gonna go out to clinician's desktop right now, and you should see in front of you our visual health record. Visual health record is really about putting the key elements of, of the client's story right in front of you in an easy to read format. Easy to read because we use icons um, such as the check mark or the red flag. We use bars to denote time frames when, that, when there's a beginning and an end. We can use color to, say, to show things that are really important. All of these come together to tell a story. It's also configurable. So while this is the way we've defined the VHR, you can define it any way you want, and it can be different by user group. So your clinicians may see something different than your doctors do. Your uh, intake workers may see something different than your clinicians. 
all of this is configurable. If we look at the screen, let's, talk, let's start in the top bar. All the way to the left, you see a picture of the client. Part of the, the importance of this VHR is not only does it give the clinician an easy way to see the data, but the only data, the only PHI on, this, on the desktop belongs to Brenda Allen. So Brenda can, so you can turn the screen around and share it. You can use the client picture in a way to bring the client into the record, helping them understand, helping them, helping them feel that they are a part of their clinical record as they come to understand it. Across the top, you'll see things like primary address, phone number, client ID, and then all the, the third column would be your primary staff, nurse, uh, eligible provider. This is a, an, an integrated record that could be used by multiple different providers, even providers that aren't, aren't part of, the, the, that may not know uh, who the primary case, who the case manager is, who the, um, who the primary staff assigned to the case is. By keeping this data up on the top, anybody who logs into this record is going to know who those people are and be able to uh, talk to those people, reach out to them if they're questioned. And then all the way to the corner, the right-hand corner, you'll see a memo field. We use this to store a client statement. The goal of, of, of treatment in CCBHC and, and many of your programs is to do person-centered planning, person-centered treatment. By adding the client statement, you really tie the, the clinical record to the client. They own it. It's their statement, their, their, view, their, their goal. On the left-hand side, um, you'll see as we go down, various headings and then underneath them uh, uh, items. If we look at assessments, assessments we would call the header, a heading. Underneath it are different types of assessments that are part of the record. And you can see, if I were to click on assessment, I would see all the assessments that can be used by this particular user group as part of the VHR. On the right-hand side, you'll see dates. These dates will take me to places in the, in the client's record where there might be more information. Maybe the, the assessment was done um, a month ago. So I'll get a date of a month ago, and if I click on that date, I'll be able to go back to that assessment when it was done and see it. So I can move back and forth in the VHR just by clicking a hyperlink. I can also use, if I know where I want to go, I can also use a calendar. It will allow me to pick any date, and I can click on that date, and I'll get taken to that portion of the VHR. So what I see in front of me is about two and a half months. And you'll see, depending on the size of your monitor, you'll kind of get, that's going to be the, the, time, the time frame that you'll see. Uh, in, in smaller monitors, you may see a month. You may see about four weeks. In larger monitors, again, you can see maybe two and a half to three months. So those are all the elements that make up the VHR. But the core of the VHR is the story that it tells. If we look here, one of the things we know immediately is that Brenda was in the hospital. She was in the hospital for about seven days. So the question is, how did she end up in the hospital? If we go back in time, we're going to see that for several weeks, we'll go to the activity line, she kept her appointments. She saw, I know that the, the, the head and shoulders with a green check means that there was an activity or a service and a progress note was completed. So she was keeping her appointments. She kept a couple of uh, individual therapy appointments. I know because purple heads and shoulders in our system means an individual therapy. And then she kept a, a red, this appointment with a red plus. Probably you might guess that that means a medication visit. When she then had one more appointment and one more medication visit, you'll see after that medication visit that the bar right beneath it ends. Well, that bar is a medication. Then she, there's a red X. 
If you were in the room with me, I'd ask you, what do you think a red X is? Since you're not, I'll say, what do you think a red X is? Give you a couple seconds and tell you it's a canceled, a missed appointment. So she missed an appointment. And then we see a red head and shoulders. And you might guess from that that it is, that's a crisis visit, a visit of because of some crisis. If we look down, we see that there are, there's a red flag by incidents, meaning a critical incident occurred. I can hover over it and get an idea a little bit about it, or I could click on it and find out more. But I don't need to because I know because it's red that it was critical. And if I look up, I see a red lethality assessment. Again, a red flag. Between those two, I know that a critical event occurred on that date at the time of the crisis visit. And as a result of, those critical, of that critical date, of those critical activities and the missed appointment and those other elements, she was put into the hospital. She stayed in the hospital for about seven days. When she was done, you'll see there's a little piece of paper, an icon of a piece of paper. That's a discharge. That means she, we received a paper discharge summary. We could have received it electronically and it would show up, um, it, would all, it could also show up there or show up elsewhere in the record. We see that there was another lethality assessment done and it was green, meaning she was no longer a danger to herself or others as she was right before her intake into the hospital. And then as we look down, we'll see several appointments that were kept, including a medication appointment. And equally important, we're going to see a med the medication was restarted. So what we're learning is that when the medication stopped, she seemed to, it, it seemed to cause tr problems in her, in her ability to, to handle her situation. A, serious lethality assessment where she was a danger to herself or others occurred. She was hospitalized. When she got out of the hospital, she was put back on medication. And since that time, she has been steadily taking her meds, seeing her, keeping her appointments, and um, she's not had any more hospitalization. We'll also see down here that there were enrollments. Prior to hospitalization, she was in the outpatient program. After hospitalization, she was put into an int intensive outpatient program. We'll also see, as we look down, treatment plans. There's a treatment plan here, and then another treatment plan started when she gets out of the hospital. I know because they're gray that there's going to be a, a, more, a more current treatment plan, because gray means that these have been moved into a historical site. And I'll also see that there were diagnoses changing after hospital. But what all of this says to you is that the VHR can provide a quick and very clear insight into the status of your client. Not only that, as I said earlier, you could turn your screen around, share it with Brenda. When, if she, let's say Brenda asked to get off her meds, turn the screen around and show her what happened the last time she stopped taking her meds, helping her understand what her care is about, reminding her of what her goal is, as it shows in the upper right-hand corner, and really letting her be involved in her care, making it truly person-centered. And that really is our VHR. And while well, I'd love to show you more, but what I want to do at this point in time is to go back to, um, back to the PowerPoint and talk more about our, our, how this VHR will help you manage the requirements of CCBHC. So let's do that. So we've done the overview of VHR. Let's get to the overview of the CCPHC. The Echo Group is really it has been tracking this since its inception, um, before even the RFP for the states was was put out by SAMHSA. We have customers in 17 of the 24 states, and we are committed to the success of our customers becoming certified behavioral health clinics, but also we are committed to a, helping our customers adapt to some of the, the parts of the legislation, even if they're not going to be a CCBHC, even if they're not in one of those 17 states, because we know that it's a reinvention of behavioral health care, 
not only does it shape our future, but we think that it shapes the future of, of our customers wherever they're located. We also know there's not gonna be one CCBHC system solution. Because like all federal, federal initiatives, they're, they're, they, they leave certain, certain decisions up to the states. So the states can decide um, <clears throat> how they're gonna track, what kind of quality measures they're gonna use, what kind of assessments they're gonna use, various elements that make our solution both set because there are some things that, that aren't gonna be different between state and state, but also configurable with a form designer tool that will allow you to modify our solution to meet the particular needs of your state. We'll, we'll help you, we'll work with you, but you can always, we, we provide a configurable system that really allows that kind of um, design and development as the states start to differ. We also know that we've been reviewing state grants, but they're not all available. So you may be in a state where we haven't been able to see the grant, um, but we're doing what we can to get copies of them so that we can really be um, out in front of the kinds of solutions that each are really specific to various states. And we know as with meaningful use, as with implementations in general, partnership with our customers is critical to our shared success. Many of you may have seen this particular rubric, this, this image. Um, it was created by, CC, by uh, National Council to help folks understand um, what is a CCBHC and what are the parts of a CCBHC, and you'll see each of them. The next slide I'll warn you has a lot of information on it, and it's really just to give folks a little bit of an idea that there are of the kinds of information behind each of these elements. Now, it's hard to read now, and, and um, but this information is available at, on, on the National Council's website. And really, it, it, we put it here because it is the roadmap for our, for our designing and implementing the solution that we're, going, that we're providing for, um, to meet the needs of the CCBHC. What we've done in the, what, what, what we've done in the next few slides is to break down each of these elements and identify those pieces of the, the, of the elements that really can be addressed by software and by a committed uh, vendor partner. The first is a need to educate and reorganize the, the, the workforce. The idea of the CCBHCs about <clears throat> the Excellence in Mental Health Act is that patient care and the quality of patient care and the results of patient care belong to every, every clinician within your organization. So, so if currently you may share uh, clinical dashboards of outcomes and the like with your management team, with your clinical management team, CC, CCBHC is designed to bring that down to the clinical level. Give <coughs> clinicians the kind of information that will help that, that will improve their decision making, help them be more client focused. We have two, pe two pieces of our solution we know will help people get to this place. One is the VHR that you saw earlier. What you'll see soon is a configuration of the VHR designed specifically to deal with the service arrays required by CCBHC. And then we have a dash our dashboards. We have several clinical dashboards that we push out to you on a regular basis. And it is in these dashboards that we're gonna give you the data that you're gonna need to manage your the measures that have to be watched on a regular basis. This is an example of those dashboards. This dashboard is the average program enrollment duration. This one is here because program enrollment duration is going to be a critical factor in identifying what is the cost of service so the eight, your agency can really understand how to come up with what's called prospective payment, which we'll talk about a little later, but that's how CCBHCs are gonna get reimbursed for services. They're gonna get paid in advance or prospectively. So they need to understand what is the length of care, how long are they care, what is the cost of care? And once you get started, am I meeting the clinical criteria that I have to meet to be um, reimbursed to get the quality 
uh, enhanced payment that is available. Other elements of educating and reorganize the, re the, the workforce, the um, staff training and implementation. Your staff are going to need to get trained on what are the, the new, what's the new clinical processes, what are, what's the new clinical focus. Also, product configuration with our VHR, it's going to need some change in configuration. Well, this can be done by you. We as partners are happy to work with you both in assisting in the training, but also in assisting in some of the configuration uh, items that can be done uh, with a VHR. You'll also be redefining job functions and other kind of human resources considerations. As those occur, you may want to change the groups that are set up in the VHR and other kinds of things, which you'd have to do in any application, but um, pretty simple to do. You can do it and we can give directions on sort of how you might go about that. And here's a sample of VHR set up for um, TCBHC. One of the things that sets a, well, the thing that sets us apart in our, with our visual health record is it gives you the ability to manage all, all the service arrays in a single place. Other applications would require several different, um, navigating to several different places to see how each of the service array elements are proceeding. But with the VHR, in one place, I can see what's going on. I can see if there are missed appointments. I can see if vital signs are done. So I don't need to. If, if, if vital signs are done and I might otherwise do them, I don't need to bother the client again because I'll see that they just had their vital signs done a week ago. I can see everything that's going on by any, whether it's a DCO or, or some, somebody in my staff, what are they doing? what's going on with the client, and I can use that information to both lessen the burden on the client so that they don't have to do anything twice, but also provide a real coordinated, integrated response to care at every point along the line. Something that, again, the VHR will su support currently and will continue to support in a way not done by other products. Clinical excellence is, a, is an important feature of um, the CCBHC legislation. The first is population health management. And population health management takes my, the individual client and makes them a part of something bigger to track uh, changes in health, to track items that are seen across a large population or a large portion of a population. We have the CCDA, which will allow you by secure email, which is a continuity of care document, to share data with other providers and to have other providers share that data with you. The VHR is going to fully support that integrated care, whether it's the healthcare um, piece of the <clears throat> CCBHC or treatment planning or case management. All of that is going to be right there in the VHR to be seen by anybody. And then finally, as part, of, as part of the VHR, we offer the ability to track syndromic um, surveillance and immunization and to create the, the, the files that are necessary to submit that data to the um, National Institutes of Health or any other agency that is tracking that across multiple, um, that in multiple areas. We also need to adapt that clinic, adapt our workflow and caseloads to this PPS cost reimbursement that I mentioned. The PPS cost reimbursement is a concept of prospective payment where you will get paid in advance of those services. You have two choices. You're, the state had two choices. They could do PPS one or two. One would be sort of a daily uh, due and two is monthly. And again, whatever, whichever it is, what you're doing is you're defining what your total, what the cost of providing services are for a variety of levels of care, and then you are, will get paid that amount in advance to provide those services. And that's, it's a risk-based system in that that can be, that may be the full extent of what you'll get paid for that period of time if, <coughs> excuse me, 
there are if services if if there are more services that need to be provided they may they it is that they'll still have to be provided you're still required to provide those services and then you would have to adapt your um, PPS amount at a later time within our system we really look at a few things that you're going to use for to to do this the first is that we're going to create authorizations based on your PPS amount so that you can track that against services as those services occur. So we'll translate those services to a dollar amount and you'll be able to see on the VHR the decrementing uh, authorization to give you an idea of where you are against where that perspective, the total of the prospective payment. In addition, fiscal EKG, which is another dashboard um, provided by ECHO, or the clinical dashboards, which you saw one of before, it will constantly review the efficacy of the, and cost of service. Are the services within the cost range that you anticipated? Is that, is, is, the, is, that, is your analysis actually being borne out by the data that we can show you? The other thing you're going to have to do, many agencies are going to have to do, is expand clinical services. There are services that have to be provided by um, the, the CCBHC, and there are services that you can contra contract, contract out for. But for most agencies, new, one, at least one element of the service array is going to be new. And the fiscal EKG is going to help you understand, by, you, by looking at the data of your current programs, you may have an insight into what any new program may cost what any of the new service arrays may cost, any of the new services required. So you can use the fiscal EKG to assist in that kind of, uh, law, in that kind of analysis. In addition, in addition, as you expand your clinical services, you're going to have new forms, new assessments, um, <clears throat> that are identified by the state. Well, we can, well, many assessments are in our system, we can support you, but with our form designer tool, the tech, we provide you a simple what you see is what you get tool to create those assessments if needed. And that tool allows you, really gives an additional level of flexibility to the system because you can configure it to meet the needs of the, of the CCBHC and you can then also create the forms necessary to support that the specific requirements of the state, specific assessments required in each of the service arrays, specific um, analysis and other items that are required by the service array. I've mentioned DCOs, or designated collaborating organizations, a couple of times. You as a CCBHC have the right to con contract with the DCOs for all but three services, all for just uh, a few services. The DCOs will provide those, those, any of the services, but have to get you that data back because the CCBHC will be responsible for doing all the reporting, managing, overseeing the quality, the cost of service, et, et cetera. You can create a fiscal arrangement with the DCO at your, that, that is either designed by the state or can be decided by the CCBHC, although the CCBHC's fund for paying is still going to be that prospective payment. So the CCBHC has to do the crisis work, screening and assessment, treating, treatment planning, and outpatient mental health and substance abuse. Any of the other elements of the service array, again, can be provided by DCOs. We anticipate that DCOs will have access to the VHR because if they add their activities and related documentation to the VHR, the VHR is going to be a fully integrated client record. You'll have <clears throat> immediate access to the kind of information that you need to report to ensure that you're within the guidelines of the prospective payment and to manage the client's care in a fully integrated way, which is one of the very, very clear goals of CCDHC. 
you saw before a VHR that had multiple categories down the, down the left and much information. Here you see an example of a VHR with just a couple of elements. Let's say you hire somebody to be your, to handle the force services requirements of the service array. Well, the VA, this VHR shows you what that might look like for that group of, of individuals. They would log in, they would see their caseload, but they would really only see the part of the caseload that, in, that is, is part of their, that is under, uh, that is, that they're contracted to take care of. You are going to have to calculate and report costs. There is a quite a, an extensive requirement for a cost report at the, at, on a regular basis. And if you've done Medicaid cost reports or Medicare cost reports, these are a little bit different because they, they're trying to look at costs that includes the administrative costs, that includes um, the HR costs. <clears throat> All those elements in addition to the, to the cost of the clinical service. The fiscal EKG is going to give you cost by program, so you're going to understand what your cost by program is. There are reports in the system, in our system right now, that will give you sort of uh, cost data for cost of activities. And then we are going to incorporate that administrative nut, that whatever that is, into our cost reporting so that it's available within our system as one of the elements that you can look at. Not one of the elements you might bill at but at least an element that you can compare to the cost of service or you can report on to show the, um, the cost of service as it's meant by the CCBHC reg regulations. Also, by using reports and <clears throat> by capturing data in this way and reviewing reports, you will be able to understand how you might want to allocate costs and what is the most advantageous advantageous. In essence, you can look at your cost structure and really compare and contrast how is the best way to allocate costs so that you are uh, providing services as required and you are within your um, daily or uh, monthly uh, prospective payment. What we recommend to folks is that they create <clears throat> a shadow claim. From, our, from billing software. That's going to give them uh, a, a good idea of what their cost of service are as compared to this loaded cost. And then create cost reports that include both that cost of service, but, but, but equally importantly, that loaded cost that has that administrative nut, as I might call it, within it. To manage the financial arrangements with the DCOs, they'll have, a, they'll have access to the VHR and that's going to assist you as you determine how you best want to manage. But you'll certainly be able to run reports <clears throat> from our system to identify services being provided by DCOs and other elements of the care being provided by the DCOs. There's a lot of data that has to get captured and then reported out. So what we've done to meet those needs is We've expanded our clinical quality measures that we had that were available to our folks who, um, who attested for meaningful use to incorporate the specific ones that are required by CCBHC. They added a, quite a number of them, so now they'll be part of our system. We've also added MISIP forms, which are being used for, to track client and family satisfaction. We're also monitoring the state implementation to see if we can identify early on additional outcome and quality measures that they intend to, cap to, to capture. We're trying to add those as, as we go along, if in fact we can find them and, and get confirmation that those. And then finally, we're, giving, we, we're going to give our CCBHC customers and all our customers access to dashboards to really allow monitoring of all the measures. And the measures include not just the CQM, but measures such as the time from um, initial, <clears throat> from the initial call to the first intake to treatment planning, so time frames of care, uh, other elements within your agency as they might relate to um, 
outcomes or quality measures. The final, this final slide is to talk about this other, another piece to um, the requirements of, of CCBHC and of the future of the provision of services, and that's the electronic exchange of data, be it to an HIE, to a RIO, or just uh, sort of to another provider. We have, because there's not a single method to do this, we rely on several methods, and this graphic, is, it kind of gives you that idea. We have direct messaging. We have a direct trust network. So if we are sharing with another direct trust network, we can share that, we can share secure messaging from, to, to that entity. If it's not a direct trust network, then we would have, then we have to work through their HIS, their provider, um, and get a, an additional email address that can work within their network. We also have a number of transformation tools that you see down below at the very bottom that are different ways that we've, we, are, we are currently sharing data and then we might in the future sharing data, share data. The challenge to you and to us is that <clears throat> there isn't a single method for sharing of data. There are multiple methods and our application is flexible enough to address, to really respond to any of those methods as they appear. We also are monitoring, um, which is tangential to this but important, the changes to 42, the, the proposed changes to 42 CFR Part 2, to, with one of the stated goals of those changes to increase the ability for behavioral health entities to share data by making the ability to share data related to alcohol and drug uh, diagnoses and care easier to share with keeping the security that needs to be there in place. We know that a lot of behavioral health agencies are challenged by these data in interchange because of the specific requirements of any data in their system related to um, alcohol and drugs. But we are monitoring that as well. Which kind of brings me to the end of um, the scheduled talk, but I do have to, but please make time to uh, answer questions. And again, if you put questions in that question box, I'll be able to see them and answer them. So please take time now if you want um, to add questions. Currently, there's, the question is how many states are slated for CCBHCs and how it will impact me if not within one of those states. Um, there are 17 states, or 24 states, excuse me, that were identified to do the project planning grant. And that project planning grant was to set up CCBHCs, create the criteria for them, and right now the schedule is for the, 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 the SAMHSA and CMS to identify eight states to go forward with actual implementation of CCBA. There is legislation to allow all 24 states to go forward if, there's, if they so choose. I think one of the important things to remember um, is the, really the second part of the question. How does it affect me if I'm not in one of those states? The real, the important piece there is that if you take, the, let's say it's all 24 states, and maybe there are 48 CCBHCs, there are probably 1,000, um, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 agencies, other agencies in those states. And those agencies are going to be DCOs. Those agencies are going to um, provide services not otherwise identified within CCBHCs. If you're not one of the states, I think there's expanded opportunity. The, many of the things that we're putting in place for you for CCBHCs will also help providers out that aren't in those states. By managing the quality measures that we've said, those are quality measures that I imagine every agency would identify as important and valuable. So you'll have access to the, not just the uh, CQM, the clinical quality measures, but you'll also have access to the dashboards that will give you that kind of insight. The goal for person-centered planning and other elements of the 
<clears throat> CCBHP, I think are important items to keep in mind as you as you put together your five-year strategies or or even current strategies and clinical um, practices for non-CCBHCs states because really they give you this legislation is the first time in a long time that the federal government created legislation focused really focused on behavioral health. If you were tested to meaningful use, then you know that um, oftentimes those legislations are really medical leg medical rules that are, are sort of by uh, as the round peg, and behavioral health didn't fit into that model, but still had to sort of push themselves into it in order to take advantage of the funds. Well, this is different. This really is designed to address behavioral health, to address integrated care, um, and the kinds of elements that are important, I think, in all 50 states as you look to how to provide care and what care is provided. Other questions? Okay, hold on while I get to those. Any other questions? Okay, if, if I'm selected as a CCBAC service, can I just say this? Yes, the question is, the, the question is, if I'm selected as a CCBHC using your application, can my DCO use a different solution and still gain interoperability for service array? Yes. Um, there are several ways to do it. They could do it using a CCDA. They could use it by um, doing, putting the, the, the data into the system as you require, but then also using their own system. It's really going to be something <clears throat> that you can contract with your DCO about because the goal would be that you have the clinical data that would be a part of the, that could be that could come in as part of the CCDA, but also have any outcomes or assessment data um, that isn't traditionally part of that CCDA that we, that we come, that there's a way for you and your DCO agree on how that data is going to be shared with you. Um, to ensure that you can do your regular reporting and you're going to, that you can do your reporting across all service arrays as you're going to be required to do. So just looking at the, I'm just looking to see if there are questions. The selection of CCBHCs is slated for October of this year. Within the legis depending on what happens with the, the, the um, with the legislation that's proposed, also understanding that October is a year uh, a month before um, an election where there will be a fairly significant. Um, well, people are going to be pretty busy in October, I guess is what I'm saying. So right now it's scheduled for October. It could slip, um, but there's no indication now that it will. So right now we're planning that in October of 2017, we'll, they'll identify uh, the, the states who are getting the, who are the eight states, and that they would then go into, um, they, they have to be ready to go in October um, and then start shortly thereafter. 
uh, with actually providing services in that way. But if you are a CCBHC, you have to be ready to start practicing as one on October 1st, which is the date that the legislation is supposed to kick in. Or the, I'm sorry, when those are going to be selected. Are there any other questions? Um, there was a question in this, but how easy is it to gain access to the dashboards that I was showing, describing? The dashboards are available. You get a notification of them through email, and then there's a URL, and you just go out to the URL, and um, you'll be able to see those dashboards. Well, the dashboard I showed you was a picture. One of the things about the dashboard is that there are multiple filters that allow you to sort of drill down on that information. So they'll be they, they're made available on a regular basis, but you can always go out and look at them. They're available at that URL. And as your data changes, so will those dashboards because they're run off of uh, date your, your production data. Um, any other questions? So are there any? We have a few minutes if there are any other questions. Well, I wish you all, um, as let me just remind you, if you have any questions or you want a demo of our um, of our solution really much, much more a deeper dive into the VHR, um, which I wasn't able to do today, feel free to uh, contact us at info at equiman.com or you see a phone number up there, 800-635-8209, and we'll be in touch with you and we'll, get, we'll schedule a demo to give you a, a deeper dive into any of the solutions I talked, whether it be dashboards or the VHR, to get a better idea of our clinical record and um, the, the various elements that we provide. Thank you very much. And uh, if there are no more questions, I will uh, we'll let you get back to your day. Thank you all very much.